And I will tell you, it's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> you need five. Oh, five, yeah, okay. So five. commerce, education, and uh, the... Um, uh, uh, you yeah. can't name the third one? The third agency of government, yeah. I, would, I would do away with the education, uh, the... Uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, commerce, and let's see. I can't. The third one, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Oops. It might seem hard to believe now, but there was a point back in 2012 where Rick Perry was a front runner for the Republican nomination for President of the United States. At one point, Perry held the lead in more than 15 straight national polls. That is until the oops moments started to pile up. So he took a second stab at it in 2016. The only problem, he was the same Rick Perry. Joining me now, former Texas Governor Rick Perry. Uh, Governor, do you want to make news today on The Real Story? Is Donald Trump right? Are you getting out of the race? You know, a, a broken clock is right once a day, so... Uh... <laughs> a broken clock is right twice a day. Rick Perry was the first candidate to drop out of the 2016 Republican presidential primary. Following his departure from the race, Rachel and T. Maddow started a tradition on this show, whereby candidates got poofed when they called it quits. Rick Perry was the first candidate to get poofed. Ten days later, Rachel poofed Scott Walker, and Maddow Land poofed our way through the Republican primary. Poof! 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 Well, with Rachel out tonight, I have the honor of poofing the first candidate in the 2020 Democratic primary. California Congressman Eric Swalwell today announced that he is ending his presidential campaign. Instead, he will focus on his reelection bid as he looks to serve a fifth term in Congress. That means that this massive Democratic presidential primary field just got one person smaller. As a result, Congressman Eric Swalwell is going bye bye from the big board. Three, two, one, poof. There he goes. Since last week, there have been three major changes in the 2020 race for president. The first, as we just showed you, is that the field has narrowed, at least for the time being. The second is that Senator Elizabeth Warren turned in a massive fundraising haul in the second quarter, despite holding no fundraisers. Senator Warren announced today that her campaign brought in more than $19 million over the past three months. That's quite a bit more than the other candidate making big polling moves this week, Senator Kamala Harris, who raised $12 million. But perhaps more importantly, it also puts Senator Warren ahead of Senator Bernie Sanders, the only other candidate to have spurned closed-door fundraisers and corporate money. Warren brought in a million dollars more than Sanders this quarter. In fact, she pulled in nearly as much money as former Vice President Joe Biden. And again, she did it without holding any fundraisers instead focusing on a small army of small donors. The result is that she more than tripled her first quarter fundraising total. That's a big deal. And Warren's big haul comes amid a shifting power dynamic that produced the third big change this week. Former Vice President Joe Biden shifted gears and apologized for comments he made nearly two weeks ago about working with segregationists. Here he was this weekend in South Carolina. Now, was I wrong a few weeks ago? to somehow give the impression to people that I was praising those men who I successfully opposed time and again? Well, yes, I was. I regret it. And I'm sorry for any of the pain or misconception they may have caused anybody. Senator Kamala Harris, who has called Biden's record into question, had this to say. I think that, that he, is, um, he is right to, to recognize the impact of his words, and I applaud him for doing that and having the courage to do it. Um, it there is still a point of disagreement between he and I, and um, that remains. But I applaud him for having the courage, to, at least as it relates to his comments about segregationists, um, to make the statement he made. So how does all of this change the race going forward? Well, joining us now is Karine Jean-Pierre, Chief Public Affairs Officer for MoveOn.org. Karine, it's always great to talk to you. Uh, and I want to start with Eric Swalwell. Uh, let me play what uh, Eric Swalwell had to say about coming out of the race. Here he is. The polling wasn't moving uh, after the debates. And, you know, the donor number was always going up, but it was never going to reach the point where we could qualify for the, you know, the September debate is 130,000, and 
You know, and, and I, you know what? I'll, I'll be honest. I, I welcome those thresholds. Just as, as someone who's putting everything into it, expecting your family and your staff and your volunteers to put everything into it, like we didn't want to just screw around here. We wanted, you know, to grow with the thresholds. And if we didn't, we were going to get out. And, and so I, those thresholds, I think, are fair, and it's the best way to mm-hmm. narrow the field. So, so do you yeah. think, Kareem, that we're going to start seeing more people sort of c- catch the realism bug uh, and start to maybe so. move out of the race? I think, can I just say poof, Joy? I have poof. to say poof. <laughs> have to say it. <laughs> poof, poof. But I'm here. I'm not disappearing. I'm here. Um, <laughs> so a couple of things. Um, so with Eric Swalwell, look, there's not an, enough oxygen in the room, right? You have 20 plus candidates. Uh, Donald Trump takes about 90% of the media political time. The rest of the candidates have to divvy up uh, 10% of that, 20 some odd of them. And, you know, after a while, if you can't get on the news, if you can't push out your agenda because because there's so many other candidates, your money dries up, you don't move up in the polls. So it, it's not surprising. I mean, look, Swalwell, Eric Swalwell is 38 years old. Uh, he was able to put out his platform in, in front of 18 million people, which was the gun reform. So he got something out of it, right? He got himself in there for a little bit, and now he goes back and he runs a re-election. But look, as we get closer, as we get more and more debates under, under people's belts, it's going to be harder to get on those debates, right? The, the, the thresholds are going to change. As he was talking about, the third debate is going to be very difficult to get on. And we are going to see a, a kind of dwindling down of, of the race of and, the candidates. And I wonder, you know, we're going to talk money in a minute. But, you, you know, there's yep. still two Coloradans. Um, you still have yep. two Texans. Is, it, is there a, at certain point in terms of just the donor base going to be an attrition within the states? Because this is now one less Californian. Right. Well, that's uh, that's an excellent point. You saw, I think, one of the things, one of the plays that Julian Castro was doing at the debate uh, two weeks ago was he went after a Texan, after someone in his own state, which was Beto O'Rourke, and he went after him pretty hard. And you could probably, if you think about the strategy that Julian Castro was thinking about, it probably was, okay, let me get someone who is <laughs> kind of in my space talking about immigration reform from a big state like Texas that Julian Castro would need to do well in, especially with the Latino voters, as seems to be his play. So he went after Beto O'Rourke, which was a smart strategy. Um, And so, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Now you have one less Californian in the race and he doesn't, you know, there's no competition there for Kamala Harris, assuming that there was any real competition. Yeah, absolutely. And Super Tuesday, California's in it. All right, let's talk about money. Super Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. The the big haul by Elizabeth Warren, big deal, right, that she was able to raise that much money without doing uh, big ticket fundraising. Razors. That's, I mean, I have to tell you, uh, Elizabeth Warren is truly changing the game on all level with the plan, leaning in with her plans and talking about racial inequality as a white candidate in this race. It's incredibly impressive. When you, $19.1 million without big fundraisers, with small donors, this is a grassroots operation that she's running. And the thing about it that is really amazing is that majority, virtually majority of her donors have not maxed out. So she gets to go back and get more money from them. And they're not from the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side or Hollywood Hills. They're from across the country. She is energizing this ba- the base, which is what you need to be doing. And, uh, and so she is, a, she is, number one, a really direct competition to Bernie Sanders, but he will have enough money to continue. Mm-hmm. And she is also a comp- she's up there in the, for, in the tier one as a real competitor yeah. with the fundraising and the polling. Absolutely. Let's talk about the guy who's number one, uh, at least in the polls, Joe Biden. Do you think he's yeah. turned the corner uh, on the whole contretemps uh, during the debate? Well, I'll say this. Look, um, black voters understand one thing. They understand how dangerous Donald Trump is. They understand the hatred. They understand the bigotry, the outright racism. And, you know, that is not surprise why we see black voters. One of the number one things that they care about is to get rid of Donald Trump, is to beat Donald Trump in 2020. And so when the two things that that Biden had to deal with after this debate was, number one, he showed his vulnerability on race. Number two, he 
put that doubt in people's mind, which was, can he beat Donald Trump? And that's a very dangerous doubt to put in people's minds when you're when you're the front runner and you're running this electability, this kind of a general election campaign. And so you saw that in the polls. You saw about, a, about an average of six points. He was going down in, in polling. And who are his number one kind of community that's lifting him up, propelling him to being a, a front runner or African American voters. Yep. So for him, it was really important that he apologize for praising segregationists. He needed to do that. It took three weeks. He took a lot of body blows, and it was showing in the polls. Yeah, absolutely. It, did, it definitely did take a, a, quite a while, but uh, yeah. we shall see from here. Kareem Jean-Pierre, Chief Oof. Public Affairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's, I'm going to make you poop, but, but, but in a loving way. All right, here we go. So thank you very way. much for being on. All right, talk to you later. Poop. Right. <laughs> now we have a ton of show ahead. There is was one person whose diary of notes was cited almost 70 times in the Mueller report. Her testimony to congressional investigators is hot off the presses, and that is next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.